For months now, we've heard about how crippling the dreaded sequester was going to be for the U.S. That was the point, after all, to force Congress to play nicely and come up with fiscal solutions. But up to this point, other than canceling White House tours and the annoyingly long lines outside of Capitol Hill, the sequester really has had little effects on those living inside of the Beltway. That was until last week when airport delays resulting uh, from job furloughs at air traffic control towers spread from New York to D.C. and then across the country. Now, the well-to-do business people would have to wait for their planes. After a couple of days of delays and escalating hubris, a last-minute FAA bill literally flew through the legislative branches to stop this from happening. The bill allows the FAA to shift some $253 million from the air traffic control system from an airport improvement fund. It was passed 361 to 41 in the House on Friday, literally just hours before a lot of those Congress members were actually catching planes to go home for recess. The bill was passed so quickly that parts of it were handwritten, and there was even a typo in it, a typo that is now holding the legislation up from landing on President Obama's desk. So why are long airport, li airport lines the straw that breaks the proverbial camel's back? Well, to talk more about this stray from the sequester, RT's financial team, Perry Ann Boring and Bob English, join me now. Hi there, guys. Thank you so much for, uh, for joining us. Um, it's great to be here. So first of all, the FAA bill was passed in record time, as I had mentioned, but it's not the only aspect of the sequester that is being felt. Um, there's also a lot of other things. There's 125,000 people that are at risk of homelessness. There's greater risk of wildfires. Um, and it just goes, it affects children, it affects low-income women, people taking AIDS tests. So Bob, I want to ask this first question to you. What does this FAA appeal mean? And more importantly, is this an indication of, of things to come when it comes to, to sequestration? Um, probably. And I think it's an evidence of the lawmaker's self-servingness. Um, I mean, 125,000 homeless people, uh, how many of these guys are risk at, at risk of wildfires? How many of these guys have Head Start programs that their children are in? Answer, probably none, yet they all fly in these airplanes, and their rich constituents also fly in these airplanes, and they need these airport control towers. So I think they're simply uh, doing what's in their best interest right here, and that, yes, there is more to come of this. Can I weigh in on this? Absolutely. Okay, so this bill actually transfers $253 million from the airport improvement account to the FAA's operational account. Now, the operational account is the largest portion of the FAA's budget, and it includes the salaries of the employees that work for the FAA. So this bill was really just to keep four lows happening at the FAA. And F the FAA was required to reduce their budget by $15.8 billion uh, with the sequestration. That was an about a 5% off the top cuts. And we're talking about $253 million that's just being moved from one account to another. So it gives the agency the authority to move funds around so they didn't have to cut for lows. Um, and it allowed them to cut in other areas that aren't necessarily um, as critical to airport security and travel safety. And that was exactly going to be my next question, is <laughs> if they're just shifting money, is it really affecting sequester all of that much? Because it's not a, a lot of new funds to the FAA, right. right? This allows the agency to move the funds around within their budget. The FAA doesn't always have the statutory authority to do so, and this bill gave them the authority from the Appropriations Committee to do that. Um, the, it is going to to increase costs by about two million dollars over ten years. Now, it might two million dollars is a lot of money to me, but we're talking about they started with a fifteen point eight billion dollar cut. And the reason why there is an additional cost because we're talking about salaries, and there were some short term issues when changing salaries around like this. So, in my opinion, I don't think it really is undoing the sequester or going to pose a significant uh, budgetary increase. And the, so, the, at one hand, we have the FAA being allowed to move their own money around. On the other hand, we have the Agriculture Department. And, and what they're doing is they literally uh, pretty much held the meat industry hostage by saying that they are going to have to furlough employees and shut down all meat industry for at least 11 days, not necessarily sequentially, but 11 days. Um, and it was actually, uh, there was a sparring that went on between Agriculture Secretary Tom Vysak and Representative Stephen King, if we can uh, listen to that, and then I'll get your guys' opinions. I would ask you if you would be willing to, and just ask you to do this, submit to this committee your recommendations on what you'd like to see written into the CR to give you the flexibility necessary so that the meat industry no longer has to be concerned about the backup that could be caused by furloughs of meat inspectors. 
Well, the answer to that question is relatively easy, Congressman. Just give us the resources. That's uh, not the option, Mr. Secretary, as you well, well see, know. Now, that's a choice uh, you all are making. That's a choice you all are making, Bob, right? Uh, exactly. So my question to you is, is this what it's going to take be to get any kind of progress holding something, an, ag an agency, an industry hostage in order to get progress in Congress? I, I think so, uh, but it's only incremental change that we're going to get here. In the big picture, it's, uh, and this is something that we're going to be talking a, a lot about on our new show, is uh, what, really takes, what it really takes to affect change here is when short-term interest rates rise, and that's something that the Federal Reserve has telegraphed for the end of this year. And when that happens, the government is not going to, to be able to deficit spend as it is right now. Uh, a lot of programs are going to have to be cut, and in much greater magnitudes than we're seeing right now, this $85 billion dollar sequester is nothing um, in terms of what's to come. All right, and I understand you guys have a new show we coming do. up, Prime Interest. Perry Ann, tell me about it. Well, Prime Interest is a finance and economic program. Uh, we're not going to be necessarily reporting on the daily statistics of what happened uh, in the stock markets. We're more going to be focusing on the details. We're going to break down these complicated issues, get into the fine print to bring you what's in your prime interest when it uh, as it applies to your finances and the economy. And Bob, tell me how this show is different than every other financial show out there. Why should people be watching you? <laughs> First, we're going to cover different topics. Uh, we're going to explore things like shadow banking and money market reform, which might seem esoteric, but we're going to break it down um, for viewers, and we're going to make it interesting. We're also going to take uh, the stories that the mainstream media covers, but they just miss. A uh, perfect example is MF Global. Had we, had we been around, and fortunately there, there was another show around during that time that covered it rather well. Um, but most of mainstream media doesn't cover financial events in a way that's relevant to the customers of the, of the futures industry or the banking industry. And we take that perspective. And we're looking out for the viewers here. Well, welcome to the RT family. I just want to put up you guys' information to, uh, for our viewers. Their show, Prime Interest, will be on. Uh, it premieres tomorrow at 4.30, and it'll be on weekdays at 4.30 p.m. Eastern. Make sure you tune in. You're not going to want to miss our new financial team. RT's Perry Ann Boring and Bob English. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.